My task is now to tell about Aalto's stake on, on this data opening and data management policy. All Finnish universities have been in the process of, of writing their own policy papers of, of data management and, and opening. And now, now it's Aalto's turn to, to show what we have achieved. Um, yep. Uh, I list, uh, I'll start by listing the, the key motivations for Aalto in, in this area. We have two, two, two goals that we wish to, wish to deliver. We wish to encourage to careful data management whether or not the data is open. So of course also any, any, any data that you handle, you should handle it carefully and, and so that it, it's reusable within your research group and so on. So that's one goal, to, to handle data well in any case. And secondly, we wish to discuss the, the principles of opening and encourage to opening of the data when possible. Uh, we consider that, that uh, the data is a strategic asset for, for the university. We have some, some goals we wish to obtain as, as the whole university. We have high class data within the university and that's, that's something that, that people outside, outside the university could also appreciate. So taking good care of it is good for the university itself. And then, then regarding opening, it's a strategic decision. Sometimes it's good to open, sometimes it's, it's not needed. But we just wish to make the decision very consciously. And we wish to consider the advantages for the researcher in question and for the whole community of the university. And then, of course, for the whole research community of, uh, outside, outside our university. Um, then I, I, I list... Um, uh, now, th this is a wish list of, of data. It's mainly meant for open data, but it actually should be ac applicable to any data. Also, also data that, that cannot be opened. We have borrowed this from, from Horizon 2020 and the G8 ministers. So we, we copy with pride. These people in Europe have made good, good work in, in drafting the ideas, and we thought it's a, it's a good starting point for for other university also. So there are five keywords. I'm sorry, the, the text is, is long, but I'll just list, list the ideas. Two keywords on this page and three keywords on the, on the next page. First of all, the data should be discoverable. People should be able to know where the data is, to, to know that the data exists. Secondly, it should be accessible, so there should, should be some means to, to get grasp of it. If, if there are some, some software needed to access it, then of course we have to know what is this software needed. And, and we recommend some, some licenses for, for storing the data. We have chosen the Creative Commons Attribution 4 international CCBY4 because it gives very good opportunities also for the university to reuse the data if the data is opened using this license. So, so the, the choice of the license is a tricky thing and our lawyers are happy to help in this matter and, and this, these are the licenses we recommend. By, by these the data is accessible to, to others also in a, in a sensible manner. Uh, then the data should be accessible and intelligible. This means that other researchers should be able to understand what it is and also consider whether, whether your data is high quality or not. And the research publications that are related, they should also be listed together with the data. The fourth, fourth keyword we use is, is usability, meaning that the data should be usable for other purposes than the original purpose of the researcher. 
other other people might be willing to use it for for other other research goals and the fifth one is related to the fourth one interoperability meaning that that the data could be exchanged from one institution to another and also com combining data sets from different parties is is here a requirement that that if we give our data then others can can take our, take our data and take other data sets from elsewhere and they should be should be operable together now this was a very long and actually a very complicated wish list and not not all of this is of course uh, straightforward and it's a very important thing to notice that we when we encourage the opening we don't require that all of these five are in place already but th these are the goals we wish to guide the, the researchers towards and and, and the, these are the items where we have to help the researchers also and, and as i already said even though the data wouldn't be opened as such even if it would be totally closed for the research group only, then these are still very useful, goal, useful goals for the use of the data within the group itself, for example. Um, uh, then I... Um, now, now, this is a standpoint we, we took at Aalto, that the opening is a strategic decision. Sometimes, sometimes not choosing the op to open the data is also a strategic choice. Uh, now, now, in opening, there are some items you have to consider. First of all, the natural question is that who owns the data? Because the owner, of course, has a say in, in when the opening decision is made. Uh, well, there are, as probably many of you know, there are different cases now, if the research project was externally funded then it's the university that owns the data but if if the the research from which the data is resulting from so if the research was university basic funding then it is the the researcher but the university still has some rights now, now of course in practice data sets accumulate over several several projects and and over a long period of time so this is always a, a, a tricky thing and maybe we shouldn't go into detail of, 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 of the ownership, which is to, which to encourage to opening and licensing. And uh, at Alto, we decided that it is the, the principal investigator or the research group leader who then decides on the opening. So it's not every, every student themselves, but, but it's the professor typically. But, but this is to say that it, it is not the, the management of Aalto University. So, so the, the decision, even though the, technically the data would be owned by the university, as in this, this first case, then we still wish the, the researcher themselves to make the decision on opening. So we don't, as a university, we don't enforce any, any opening in this, this sense. And of course, there are several cases where data cannot be opened. It's not, not open if, it, if, if opening would violate privacy or safety or security or, or project agreements or some concerns of, of private partners. And we encourage to, to Creative Commons licensing and your licensing. Um, no, as I said, we have made, made this policy paper which I already, the, the key, key things I already listed. So, so we, we had a small working group on the policy paper itself and we had a qu quite big discussion within the other community. But now, of course, this policy where we define these principles is only the first step. And the, the big work is still ahead of us in the implementation we, because we are planning to, to make an implementation guideline for the researchers on, on how to handle your data, when to open and when not. And, and there are many, many things we still have to consider and we wish to give ad, as, as much of advice to the researchers 
as possible. So this will be a long, long work ahead of us in making the implementation plan. And, and I think that all Finnish universities now have the same problem. And I think it would be a very good idea to collaborate nationally and of course also internationally. But first of all, nationally within Finland, between universities who are in the same, same stage. And I just wish to remind that regardless of all these papers written, <laughs> written at Alto Management, of course our researchers all the time, they participate in, in research data management activities, national level at CSC and also international level at, at the EU and so on. So this is, this is a common business for, for many of our researchers. People have done, I can see many familiar faces in the audience who have done this for, for a very long time and, and have, have also been very helpful for, for us in, in writing these policy papers. And so this is standard business for many of us. Uh, now, um, um, as I said, as I, I think most Finnish universities are, are in the stage of, of uh, writing guidelines for their researchers. So, so there are many, many issues that we have to consider together. And I believe the audience in this room is very much in favor of opening. Maybe you didn't come here if you didn't think opening was a good idea. So it's not, it's not us that we have to, <laughs> have to educate, but may, maybe the, the big groups outside the, the room. Uh, and here I, I'm listing some questions that our researchers have, have posed during the discussion period of, of the, the, the data policy paper here in, within the Aalto University. And I believe these are questions that very often arise in every university. And these are so something that we, we should find answers to. First of all, of course, th we need practical advice, so we, we will try to help on, on writing practical advice on handling and storing and opening and, and all this. Uh, then then uh, um, a very, <laughs> very, very uh, good question from the researchers is often, often that, okay, okay, does the university now enforce me to open my data? Do I really have to open my data? No. No, Alto doesn't, doesn't force you to open it. It is a strategic decision whether or not, but we ask you to think about it. We, we ask you to make the decision whether or not to open so that everybody should think about it. Of course, it's, it's very natural. There are cases where, where it cannot be done, but, but we ask people to think about it. Uh, okay, secondly, um, now, now, if the data is actually owned by the, by the researcher themselves, how can the university then utilize it at all? Yes, they can if, if there's a good choice of, of licensing. So even, even the data would remain in the ownership of, of the researcher, then, then using CC BY4 license, then the uni university gets sufficient rights to, to reuse and, and benefit from the data. Uh, People are worried about of, of, of getting advantage of the data themselves before releasing it. In, the, in this case, there can be an embargo period during which the data is not opened. So during that time, the researcher can take full, ad, full advantage, write the first papers themselves before opening. That's a practical, practical thing to do. Uh, then then people are worried, do, do I then get credit? If, if I release my data, do I get credit? Well, yes, if you use this CCBY4 license, then the, the license requires that the reuser must acknowledge the original creator. Then a very practical worry that, that uh, people have that, okay, if I release my data, then do I get thousands of emails and phone calls asking, asking advice and help on using the data. Well, okay, that might be the case, but well, it's up to you. You don't have to answer anybody. It's, it's totally up to you. Nobody can force you to, to 
serve the community in, in answering every, every question. At, at least the university does not require you to do so, so it's totally up to you. Um, then about software, in some cases software can also be re released. Of course the, the licenses of the software itself should be taken into account that you cannot, you cannot just like put Excel to, to open or in an open repository itself, yeah, for example. And the last question the researchers has that was that if I open my data, then do I get some, some kind of merit myself? Well, of course, we, we all know that, that uh, openness creates more visibility for your research and for your publications. So, so that, in that way, you merit within your own science community. And we also thought about whether this could be, could be used as a merit in the university HR system, but, but we didn't, so far we didn't find any good, good way to do it, so it's a bit tricky. Um, so um, we, as I already mentioned, there are many questions remaining for the implementation of, of the data storage and data policies, and these are things we have to re return within the Finnish university community to find answers that would serve everybody. Uh, and, and within Aalto we also try to build some, some repositories. It, it's an open, open question on how to handle that and we hopefully will hear something about those, those today. Uh, that's all I had. Well, the policy paper is, of course, <laughs> It also has to be in public domain itself. <laughs> yeah. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ella. We have some time for a very quick question. So, are there any questions in the audience? We have this Alta University innovation called the Catchbox, which you can use then for presenting your question. And please use the microphone because that way our remote participants can also hear the questions. Okay, if that's the case, then we can thank. Uh, uh, okay. Um, is it a good uh, reason uh, for not opening uh, data that you say that it's uh, my competitive advantage that I can get better research partners, better universities to work with me if I have got this unique data and we don't open the data? Is that a good reason for not opening the data? What do you think in Alta? Well, uh, we, we spoke about it with, with the vice president recently, so maybe, maybe the answer is that, uh, of course, if there are some other reasons that you cannot open, then using the, day, the closed form of data as, as a way to attract collaborators within the university, then that, that's a very good goal. Okay, okay, there's another question, so let's take a quick question. Yeah, quick question. So, uh, data citations, that is one way of getting merit uh, from opening data, right? Indeed. Yeah. And also there is a lot of um, emerging data journals now. One is called mm -hmm. even just data, mm -hmm. where I'm in the editorial board. So this is just, just to, as a yeah. comment. Uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, to get merit, right? Yeah, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's give a hand once more to Ella. Continue.